I was literally, you know, sitting there on PayPal and I transferred my, my one month of YouTube earnings, which was $2,000 oh, from my PayPal. All right, welcome back to the podcast. Today, we are doing a live podcast and we have Mr. Faze Blaze on the on the podcast. How are you doing What's today? What's going on? I'm doing good, bro. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. It's a good morning. It's a good morning here. Where are you? Um, where are you at again? Remind me. I'm in Iowa. Iowa. Yeah. What's the weather like this time of year right there? Oh, it's cold. It gets cold. <laughs> it's cold. I'm sure it's. Uh, I mean, we've had some snow. Okay. Uh, cool. But it's probably. I just went outside. It's 35 degrees right now. Okay. Cool. So it's a little chilly here. Do you guys get heavy, like, deep, snowy winters in Idaho? Or Iowa, sorry. I don't know what I said. I, I mean, all the eyes are the same, I guess. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we can. It can it can get there. It's uh, okay. not unusual. We have a okay. pretty wide range of, of climate here. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Uh, there There is uh, something that's pretty pretty new since the last time i mean it's new for now but uh charge chocolate for you i'm so <laughs> curious about this process because you know making a product isn't something that a lot of people do um and i want to know like what what was the conception like for you is it something that was completely from the ground in your brain or were you approached with it or how, how did totally. that come about? Totally. So, um, first of all, for those of, of the viewers uh, watching the podcast who don't know, uh, Charged Chocolate is my brand that I recently launched. Wait, hold on. Actually, let me just grab some real quick to show as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um. Yeah, it's a... Uh, caffeinated chocolate brand with um oh, I'm ripping one open real quick with 54 milligrams of caffeine and this is what it looks like let me see if my camera will focus focus it is a Chocolate ball comes in both dark chocolate and milk chocolate. And um, yeah, so like I said, um, we officially announced this brand last week. Um, and we've actually been working on this for a really long time. So if you go to uh, Charge's Instagram page, which is just Charge Chocolate, um, and you scroll all the way down to the very bottom, you can see uh, our first post is of like the, the, the patent that we got for the product. Um, or the trademark, rather. Mm -hmm. um, and that was posted uh, March of 2021, which was almost a year before Prime was even released. Oh, wow. So we've been working on this for a really long time. It's It's been an idea for a long time, but it's taken a lot of time to actually get it to a, a, a point where it can be launched. So kind of like how the process started is like I wanted to create some sort of product um you know i had been promoting products in the gaming scene for a really long time uh, as you know sponsored by a bunch of energy drinks for a, for a really long time and i love energy drinks i love caffeine I, I i take it every day um so i wanted to create a product but i didn't want to create like you know another drink i felt like you know obviously you can be very successful with that but i just wanted to see if i could make something different and you know we made a gum at first um which we still have and like uh sell but it's not really something that like i talk about or promote but that's kind of like where it all started and then um we had the idea to do caffeinated chocolate and it took a really long time to even figure out like how we can make that work and we tested so many different uh chocolate suppliers like um from all around the world like literally in a, in, in so many different countries um and we ended up settling with a production company that makes chocolate in spain mm. and the chocolate is incredible and um yeah so they they 
uh, became our partner on the production side. And um, yeah, after, you know, a couple of years of getting the branding to a place where we felt it was really good. Um, and, you know, obviously ordering a bunch of product, you know, ahead of time so that, um, you know, we have some some product to sell and stuff. So it's been quite a process, but I'm really excited, man. You know, it's uh, it's it's one of the things that I'm most passionate about in life right now. Um, you know, just it's a big it, it's a big venture, you know, creating a, a new brand and and releasing it to the public. So, um, yeah, that's, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really interesting because of, like you said, you've been promoting products in the in the gaming space for a really long time. And um, now to have something with your name attached to it and have quite a bit more stake in the game because it is your product uh, is super cool. And I mean, obviously, to be a fan of you, to see all this is, is really... I know I, I text you and... I just I just love seeing you being passionate about stuff like I appreciate um, it man. Yeah, absolutely. I think that it's really cool um to like how, how has that been for you to see a, you, this product come to life and I mean now launch like Dude, it's I I'm I'm so excited man. I was blown away by how many people like um just kind of found out about the brand off the rip uh, uh -huh. a, a couple of gaming pages they like picked us up and and promoted it a little bit um and a bunch of people reached out and just asked me to try and it's just been so dope to see everybody's reaction because like the reason why i stand behind the product is because it's so freaking good bro mm. like it actually tastes delicious you can compare it to the finest chocolates in the world bro like like name the, your favorite chocolate i promise you it tastes just as good if not better and it has that added effect of, of caffeine, and I just love it. I think it's such a good product for so many different industries. Uh, we did like a little test run with you know, people from various walks of life. Mm -hmm. uh, we sent some to people in the Uber and trucking world. They really loved it uh, because they got their caffeine and they didn't have to stop for, and go to the bathroom as much. Um, similar reason, it was kind of a good uh, trial run to do in hospitals. We had uh, nurses and doctors who were trying it and for the same reason, you know, um, going to the bathroom less. And also it's just easier to like carry around with you as well yeah. versus, you know, a full energy drink. And, you know, when you open up an energy drink, um, you know, it's carbonated. So if you don't drink it, you know, within a certain amount of time, the carbonation is going to go away versus charred chocolate. You know, you can really hold on to them all day and, you know, enjoy them as you please. So I think there's a lot of benefits to the product. Like I said, I think, um, you know, it works in a lot of different industries. I think for gaming, it's great, too, because, like, you know, people stream for long hours and, you know, don't want to take too many bathroom breaks. And sometimes when you, you know, drink a whole energy drink, you're going to be peeing a lot. So, yeah, I think that you found kind of a gap in the market. Like now, like the more you talk about it, the more it makes sense. And I think that's super important. Was it always caffeine that was going to be the product? Um, actually not. We were looking at a bunch of different things, you know, just things that I was passionate about, um, that, you know, maybe I could make my own thing or make something, you know, a little bit better. Um, but we didn't really settle on anything. Like just to give you a couple examples, like I was looking into maybe making, you know, my own gaming chairs or, you know, my own mouse pads, mm -hmm. but didn't really feel super passionate about it. Um, you know, we were looking at a couple of other, you know, different products in the tech space and stuff, but Again, at the end of the day, like this is just like from the beginning, I was just like, this is such a cool product idea. And the more we like, you know, tested different chocolates and and, you know, the more we figured out how we're able to actually put the caffeine in there as well. The, the way that they, they do it at the factory, they, um, you know, they make the chocolate mixture and then they put in uh, caffeine and hydros, which is basically just dehydrated caffeine. It's just ca caffeine powder. Mm -hmm. um, and that's literally it. That's all that is in there. And um you know, it's, it's just, it, like I said, it works. It has 54 milligrams caffeine per chocolate ball. And, um, you know, I personally take like two every single morning. I love taking them before my workouts um, because I, well, I used to take pre-workout. I don't, I, I take like a stim-free pre-workout now and I take some charged chocolate with it. Um, and uh, the sugars from the chocolate, like they really, um, they, they, they fill my muscles up with glycogen and uh, kind of give me a little bit more of a, a better pump and stuff. That's really awesome. 
I'm really, I, it's really awesome to see. Uh, do you, so a lot of the, the recent stuff with, um, the new Call of Duty, I, again, it's, it's really cool to see you taking a, um, a good stance on showing love to the community. What, what has been your outlook on the, the trick shotting community and showing love to, to the smaller creators and stuff like that recently? I mean, I just try to show love where I can, you know, um, I, I think there's so many awesome people in the trick shotting community and it's so cool to see it still being so active. Mm -hmm. Um, and really the only place I'm able to show, you know, a lot of love is on Twitter. Um, so, you know, I try to like, you know, any cool trick shot that I see, um, I quote trick shots from time to time. Sometimes I'll even post them from time to time. Um, so, you know, I feel like it's uh, uh, not much that I'm doing or, you know, depending on what perspective you look at it from, from my perspective, I feel like it's like the least that I could do really. Uh -huh. I wish I could do more for the trick shotting community. You know, there's a point in time where like, you know, when me and Rain and Adapt and, you know, kind of everybody who was involved in the trick shotting community making content for, tr for the trick shotting community, you know, it was a really great time. And, and, you know, because those people were posting so consistently and, and so successfully, I feel like it had an impact on the trick shotting community as a whole. And um, I would love to see it get back to that point one day, you know. Um, where people are, you know, posting content consistently on YouTube as far as trick shotting stuff goes and adding the personality stuff into it because, you know, it's important. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if it can, if it can get, get back to that. But I, I will say, you know, um, a lot of the phase guys have been trick shotting again. Like, I'm sure you've seen, you know, Rain, he hit, hit a shot, Adapt hit a couple of shots, Rug hit a shot. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're like, as, as far as I know, I, have, I haven't played um, with them maybe in like 10 days because I was in Europe visiting my family. But up until then, you know, they were literally, and they probably still are, like grinding every day, like playing lots and lots of hours. Like, uh, you know, the, the beta weekend, uh, like Rug, I was playing with Rug most of the time, and he literally was on every single hour of the beta, like no fucking joke. Anytime like I had to hop off and I got back on, like he was still on in the six man. So um yeah, I mean I mean, yeah, that's kinda like my take on it. I think there's still a lot of opportunity, but it comes down to, you know, people just coming together and, and making content and stuff. So um as far as I go, you know, I'm not really like the best trick shotter. I I used to be very good, you know. Um I've been going for trick shots un unsuccessfully, haven't hit anything yet. Um, so I don't know, you know, how much trick shotting content I'll be making. I'm really looking forward to Warzone, war the new Warzone map's dropping in two days. So I'm hoping that it's pretty good because if it's good, then it could be like, you know, uh, a, a good time to, you know, stream and get back into everything. So, yeah. Is, so I, when I was in the COD community heavy, I was a, a sniper, like a, a feeder. I never, I never understood, like I appreciate, have love for trick shotting, but one thing, I just never could understand how people would time the trick shot, and people try to explain it to me, I don't, I never understood it. Is it like riding a bike? Like, can you still, <laughs> can you still like 1080 consistently on target? I mean, if you go through my Twitter, um media you'll see like an attempt that i post during the beta and i just i, I didn't post any attempts after that because I, I don't know i i just want to like post an actual shot that i hit but uh -huh. you'll see on that attempt you know i'm i i got very accurate i'm not like the thing about trick shotting is you know the people who hit the most are the people who are going for shots accurately with every single shot so that, that means every time they go for a shot their crosshairs are lining up on people on people you know mm -hmm. and the more you do that the more potential you have to actually hit a shot and like some of these trick shotters that i play with like kano or jinsu um you know they are so on target anytime you spectate them they're completely on target and you know people like that are going to have more of an opportunity to hit me personally i'm not as consistent at being on target you know that'll probably just come with time the more i play um as far as like you know getting back and riding a bike it really is like it's you know i, I spent a couple hours and i was already you know feeling better you know definitely not as good as i used to be but um 
you know, I think I think I can get back to it if I just really grind and and um, yeah. How often, if at all, are you going back and watching like old eps? You ever do that, dude? I'm gonna be completely honest with you, bro. It's very very rare uh, that I yeah. go back and watch like my own content, my own episodes or episodes from the time period that I was in phase. But I think what I, what I do do a little bit more often from time to time is watch old phase montages. Yeah. So from time to time, I'll, I'll watch like an old montage um, because you know, I have just those couple of montages that are just like my absolute favorites. One of them being, um, what you doing baby girl? Oh, okay. Um, one of them being uh, the phase uh, Clash of the Clans team Taj. Oh yeah, from a long time ago. It was one. one part. One part of it was edited by Gummy, and the other part was edited by Fur. And it was like an NA versus EU type thing. That one of my favorite montages of all time. Um, I also really enjoyed Phase Aqua's introduction to Phase. One of my favorite montages of all time. Pretty much any Fur or or Gummy edit, like I I will go back and watch from time to time. Um, but as far as like my content goes or content that we made at the phase house, um, I really don't like go back and watch those videos too often. Um, I don't know why. I feel like they'll be good memories, you know, when I'm a little bit older. Mm -hmm. But as for right now, I feel like even though it has been a lot of time since, it's still like very recent in my life. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I really enjoy the the one mil, the phase one mil team Taj. That's yeah. Oh, of course, the phase one mil Taj. I yeah. mean, that's gives me goosebumps every time I watch it. Yeah, um, I would. I went back and watched some of the the lab, um, and that was really crazy to me. All all the time, I I'm wondering how like it came about with you and like murder beats and like you just you talk to cool people, you know, cool people, and that's really you know interesting. Mainly, one of my big points is like. Are you are you getting nervous for some of this stuff? You ever feel a little um, bit nervous? I yes, I do. I think oftentimes I get a little bit nervous in the lead up to things. Yeah. But I wouldn't say I wouldn't exactly. It's just like the anticipation and the excitement of it and you know, yeah. like a little bit of just like overthinking it a little bit at times where like maybe I'm trying to rehearse things you know um you know maybe maybe like you felt today you know at the end of the day you know we're we have a relationship you know we've done content in the past but you still might have been a little bit anxious or you know excited about today and that's like the same feeling that i have and you know um at the end of the day you know the older i get i realize you know i i i know what i'm doing when it comes to being in front of a camera and just talking so just like you know trusting myself not overthinking it too much and then usually like when the moment comes like i'm i'm you know on the set interviewing these rappers or whatever um you know i i usually just lock in and i'm like okay i know what to do so um yeah i mean the only person i was a little bit like nervous for i would say was logic when he came on because you know he's a you know i really respect the fuck out of logic he's yeah. a really dope dude upstanding guy incredibly smart incredibly talented couldn't say enough about the dudes so i think that was probably like the most nervous but again it's just like excitement and stuff um as far as like your comment on me knowing a lot of like cool people um really it just comes down to like all the people that you see they're all like gamers you know yeah. so all, all, they're all like low like like you know whatever they do whether they're a rapper or a producer or actor like athlete whatever you know that you see that life in the public and you know them for that but in their free time they're gaming 24 7 and mm -hmm a lot of the times those people even as successful as they are they'll look at people who are like streamers and youtubers and be like damn like i want to be like that even though they've yeah. already accomplished so much so there's like a level of respect i feel like that kind of goes into that so um yeah that's 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 pretty much that but i mean yeah i've been you know really blessed to meet all the different people that i have and you know i try to learn as much as i can from everybody you know whenever i speak with somebody i really am interested in what they you know have going on in their life and and you know everybody has a different story and and something to learn from so i mean as a as an interviewer it's it's so important to be some level of a of a fan and be interested in it and um i think one of the biggest 
one of my like core memories was when uh didn't logic go to the face face house he and, did yep yeah i i remember thinking that was the coolest thing in the entire world i mean those those worlds colliding it was was super cool and all the love that he showed it uh for for phase was super sick back in the day yeah no he was he was definitely like super involved and i think later on his in his career you know he really uh like like reflected on that time and and showed a lot of love to the gaming community and um i think the gaming community reciprocated the love you know he started going hard on his discord server and i uh -huh. think a lot of the people who were in that you know are from the gaming community because gamers are you know just naturally on discord and stuff uh nowadays so um yeah i mean i like i said i couldn't say enough good things about the dude and and you know glad that he came to the house glad you know he showed some love back then too and we were able to make some content so those are all you know really great memories yeah, speaking a little bit of uh the new york house uh i know you guys get uh bombarded with with everything from um from back then but i did want to talk a little bit about uh that that beginning about the the money aspect when you were getting into like when you moved out to the to the phase house in new york what what was that looking like for for money and then when whenever that did start to happen how did you kind of interpret that and where where did could you see where it was going or were you a little skeptical on how how high it could become um i was always very confident not fully convinced but confident that oh what's up kano i literally was just talking about you five minutes ago we we're talking about <laughs> trick shotting and 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 i mentioned your name i was like people like kano they literally like every attempt they go for it's right on point <laughs> So if you go back into my VOD, I'll publish my VOD after. If you go back like 10 minutes from where we are right now, you'll, you'll hear us talking about you. Shout but, out, Kano. What, uh, hold on. I'm going to answer one more question. What's for breakfast? I'm, my girlfriend made me some uh, eggs and some sausage, breakfast sausage. So shout out her. She's the goat. But um, sorry, ADHD. Remind me what, what the question was. The Okay, the money. So yeah. Um, yeah, so I was always very confident but not fully convinced that – this content social media stuff would never stop growing and, and becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. I just, I, from the very beginning was super tapped in and I saw the growth from the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, when I was in it and really grinding hard, oh, thank you so much, Bibbo. That's okay. Um, and when I, when I like got into it, I was like, okay, I know the history. Like there's no way that it can't, at least stay the same if not scale because every you know new kid that's getting a phone youtube whatever like they're hopping on social media they're watching youtube videos it's just like the world that we live in but um dude like when i was in the new york house grinding making videos every day i did not have um you know like a uh like a real world perception of the value of a dollar because in high school, um, the first job I ever had was I was a referee for soccer games. Um, and I would, uh, you know, just on weekends, I would referee tournaments for like young kids, like 11, 12 years old, uh, younger even sometimes. And, and that was like my first job and I made pretty good money, but you know, that didn't really teach me like the value of a dollar. I was still being supported by my family, mm -hmm. um, you know, at the time. And then the only other job that I had in high school was I was a volunteer at this program called uh, AYSO VIP Soccer, um, which is like uh, pretty much a, a program where um, adults and children with um, uh, disabilities get to come together and, and play soccer. And I would volunteer there every Sunday for a couple hours. Um, so besides those two things, you know, I had no real job experience. And because of that, no real, you know, perspective of money. I feel like, or at least the way that I learned about the value of a dollar is when I had my back up against the wall, had to pay bills, and I didn't have the money to pay for the bills. There was a time after the phase house New York where I was, you know, not doing well with money at all whatsoever. And I, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But as far as the phase house New York air goes, you know, I really wasn't um, 
you know, I didn't, I didn't understand like, you know, how much money we were actually making. And I have a very vivid memory where I was sitting, uh, it was me in my room at the Phase House New York and I was sitting at my desk and Nick, my best friend had just came to visit and he was sitting behind me on my bed and he was watching me transfer my, and he came during, I think it was like January or, or December even. So, and like towards the end of the year, the CPM like goes yeah. up a lot on YouTube. Yeah. And this is, remember, this was back when we were literally posting every single day and like our videos were doing really well too. Um, and I'm, and I'm, I'm about to tell you the number, but just before I say it, I don't want this to come off as like a flex or anything. I just like, I'm a real ass motherfucker. I, I keep it real, you know, but I was literally, you know, sitting there on PayPal and I transferred my, my one month of YouTube earnings, which was $92,000 oh, from my PayPal into my bank. And Nick who was sitting behind me, you know, he at, at that age had a much better understanding of what a dollar you know, meant because um, he was working at a grocery store and his family wasn't supporting him. So it was really up to him to pay all his bills, you know, uh -huh. his phone bills, his gas, everything. So he, through that experience, you know, understood what, you know, the average salary is, what you, like, you know, he had an understanding. So when he saw that, you know, he really was shook by it, you know, not just in the moment, but like for a, quite a while afterward. And, you know, a couple times he, you know, he, he tried to talk to me and explain to me, you know, how much money this is, but, you know, I had, I had no perception of it at the time, you know, and, 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 and it just goes to show you too, that like, like myself and everybody else who was a part of that OG phase house New York wasn't doing it for money. Like nobody's yeah. goal ever was to obviously, you know, we wanted to not go to school and, and you know, keep making videos and, and, and you know, playing video games, uh, which required us to make a salary. So, you know, we we had to make a salary. But at the end of the day, you know, no amount of money was going to make us happier than what we were doing, which was just, you know, making content as bros. And and um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. This is just pure curiosity, obviously. It's not um, something that... Uh, not like the dollar amount, but as as a whole house back then, are you... Like, are so people telling you how much... Like, do you know how much people other people were making like are you guys discussing that as um i do but honestly like i don't feel comfortable talking no, about yeah, how no, much no. anybody I was else just, is making but i mean you can you can you can just do like you know a rough estimate if you look at our subscriber counts you know i had like you know at the time maybe like one to two million subscribers adapt always had like about doubled as many subs as me rain and apex about three times as many so you know that's kind of the same impact on the on the money but i will say though you know Sorry, I'm like eating food right now because my girlfriend made me some food. So um, I will say, though, Norden was grinding harder than anybody uh -huh. because he was at a certain point in time. He was making a main channel video, a second channel video and streaming all in the same day. And he would do all of the, you know, editing himself. He didn't have an editor for that. So he would literally like wake up in the morning, go to the gym, make his main channel video, edit it, post it. Communicate with a thumbnail guy, get a thumbnail made, hop back on COD, make a second channel video, edit it, post it, get a thumbnail made for it, and then he would hop on Twitch and stream afterward. So, you know, and I still to this day have not came across a YouTuber with a harder work ethic than FaZe Rain had during that time. Um, and, and I think even if you look at the top YouTubers like Mr. Beast and stuff, it doesn't compare to the work ethic that Norton had because they all have teams around them and yeah. they need teams. They need teams to make the content that they are making. They need good teams and a lot of people around them. So it's not to discredit them at all, but Norton was doing it all on his own. And up until this day, again, like I said, I've, I've never seen anybody go that hard. I think that it, I think that's a testament to um, the output as well because of back back then like he was you know how you just mentioned what he was putting in he was getting a lot out of it too and i it was it was so crazy i mean everyone references you know the three uploads a day or whatever and the people just how much of a workhorse he was and it was 
so inspiring and i mean that's where a lot of people come from like especially content creators come from that era of i'll just see the most random people say like that that's what they like got inspired from was like that era of phase and stuff definitely and and you know what like literally so many content creators were tapped in during that time like from all mm-hmm. walks of gaming like even mr beast came up to me during one of the shoots that i was at for one of his videos i forget what it was we we're at a paintball course but he literally came up to me and said i used to watch your videos you know which is like and i've had That's so many experiences with 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 so many different people so it's 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 super humbling i just want to comment on something that somebody said in my stream chat uh clear 4k i hope you're still here and are able to hear my response but I think it's a very interesting comment and I do want to talk about it. <clears throat> so we were kind of, I guess I was going on and on about like how passionate and, you know, the work ethic and stuff back then. And, and he commented on it. He said, how could you see, how could he see that and like never post no passion? Not exactly sure if he's talking about me, but I do just want to comment on that because I think it is interesting. Um, you know, when I made videos during that time, it was my fucking life. I didn't have friends outside of the YouTube world. I didn't do anything extracurricular. I didn't uh, date. I didn't go to school dances. Um, I didn't do anything besides YouTube. And doing that for so many years, I conditioned myself to believe that it is the single most important thing in my life. And my entire uh, like value as a person and my emotions were fully tied in with my output and the success of my content to the point where if I recorded a video and the footage corrupted or, you know, I posted the video and it did a lot worse than I expected, like my day would be ruined to the point where like no matter what time it was, just fucking going to sleep. Um, and that was a really toxic relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, and I... And, and, and you know what? It made me the best YouTuber ever. Like that level of, you know, me caring uh, brought out the best content and, and made me like insanely successful at the time. But it also took a serious toll on my mental and really ruined my life for a little while because I couldn't find happiness in anything else. And I was just getting more and more sad that I wasn't, you know, posting or, you know, and it's, and the thing is, it's like, People think it's really easy just, you know, making content and, 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 you know, but at the end of the day, at least me, like, I can't fake being in a good mood. Like if I'm going through like a depressive state in my life because someone in my family passed away or, you know, I broke my leg, I was super depressed during that time because I literally, you know, I, I, you know, I exercised my life at the time and, and I couldn't do anything. I was bedridden. I couldn't, couldn't walk for months. So, um, you know, and it's and it, and I didn't have a team, you know, either. You know, all, all of us at the Phase House, you know, we didn't have teams to to help keep us accountable. It was it was us that was keeping ourselves accountable. So, you know, basically what I'm getting at is, I was super passionate about it for a long time. I did it. It was my life. And you know, I started seeing a therapist, and the therapist was really able to show me that, um, you know, this social media stuff is just a job. It's just a job at the end of the day. You can put your all your emotions into your job, but at the end of the day, in a lot of situations, that can affect you negatively. Uh, and that goes for any job, you know? And, you know, she really, over a lot of time, changed the way that I looked at all of this social media stuff. Um, and there's there's positives and there's negatives to that. The, the negative is that, yes, I create content with a lot less passion than I did before. Um, and that's like evident, you know, across all of my content. But, you know, I do it on purpose because I put my passions into other things like my family, my girlfriend, uh, my marketing company, which I've been working on for the past five years. Now this charged chocolate brand and, you know, just things that I have new passions for, you know, because I feel like that's just what life's all about, you know, just finding new things that you like and trying them out. And if they work out, they work out. If they don't, they don't, you know, so um, that's that's pretty much it. And I think a lot of people get mad at me because they do know that. I have made good content and and they see the content that I make now and they're, you know, like, you know, this this is this sucks. This isn't what you used to, you know, whatever. And 
really there's a reason why you know it's just because at the end of the day you know i'm I, I don't have my heart in it the way that i used to and i don't want to i don't want to because i know how i am and if i start getting obsessed about the views again it's just gonna you know put me in another toxic situation so i feel like i have a really good you know over the past couple of years i've developed a really good way to make content you know for a while i was streaming even with the streaming stuff like you remember obviously when i was streaming every day but that was another example of like me being like fully in it super passionate but like overly passionate like too much i wasn't taking care of any of my responsibilities i wasn't seeing family i wasn't going you know for thanksgiving for christmas i was missing everything because i was just so obsessed with streaming and you know that got to a point where you know everything in my life went fucking south every single thing went south besides you know my successful streams and you know the money that i was making from it but everything else was like going to shit and so you know that's another example of like you know taking it too far and i'm still learning how to balance everything but i think over the past few years i've really found you know a, a, a way to make content that that you know doesn't stress me out and and keeps me happy you know that's and that's really what i care about you know the most so um I have like a, a, a little team now. I have uh, my roommate, Ryan, uh, who's been living with me for one and a half years. Um, he like posts most of my content and he helps me, you know, put the videos together and stuff. And then I have this awesome editor named YB uh, who like edits pretty much all of my content. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it, I, I love that. I love having, oh, oh, we got Mr. Evan in chat, Faha Uno. He's actually uh, Ryan's best friend. Um, and um i love you evan you're you're a fucking beast but um yeah so i'm really happy with kind of like you know the, the team that i have it's really just us three and you know it, it, they're able to take a ton of you know load off of me as a content creator so i can you know focus on other things um obviously the content creation sp space is extremely lucrative um so a lot of people may look at at uh you know the fact that i'm not taking full advantage of it as like a big l but just know that i am being successful in other aspects of my life and other businesses, you know, and um, at the end of the day, I would love to create something that can live on its own and doesn't need me, you know, mm -hmm. content, content, like I, I'm, I'm always going to have to be the driving factor. No, no matter how good I make my team or how much I pay people at the end of the day, I have to be the person to show up and, you know, make sure everything is, you know, the way that it's supposed to be. So, I would love to create something that can sort of live on its own. And like my marketing company game over is actually getting to a point where it, it is like that, uh, you know, over the past year, especially I've been able to take a, a bigger step back as we've hired, you know, new employees from different, you know, killer companies like stream elements, um, even some people from some different orgs. So, um, yeah, I think, I think, um, yeah, I mean, that's just kind of like my two cents on everything. I know I just rambled for a little bit, but I just wanted to chat about that. <laughs> no, I yeah. love it. I love it. I also, I uh, I would be remiss if I, uh, I saw King Wolves in the chat. My my best friend is a massive King Wolves fan, so I just. Wanna... Oh yeah, he is in the chat. Yeah, he said when there's no balance, there's no happiness. Something I've learned in the past couple of years. Yeah. Cool. Very cool seeing some other content creators relate, but um, yeah, Wolves is a is a fucking beast. I love King Wolves. I I have always said when. I mean, when my content, I guess when my numbers, I guess, were the were the best um, or the highest, my mental health was at the worst. And so I've just tried to, I mean, yeah, it's, it's literally all about balance. You just, you, like I was succeeding in this thing that I thought was everything, but then, you know, relationships take a hit and then, you know, everything else slips, but you know, you're supposed to be the happiest ever because, you know, you have numbers online, but it's just not the reality all the time. Yeah, I mean, um, I think, I think you being a creator, you can really relate to a lot of this, but I think over the coming years, five, 10 years or whatever, you'll start to see a lot more creators be very transparent about, you know, what it's really like being a creator uh -huh. and, I think the public, you know, will slowly learn over time. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's super important. I think that, um, I think people glamorize the grind a lot. And I think that we've seen 
people over the past couple years i mean you're a prime example of taking your health more seriously and um you know when in high school and you know shortly after high school or whatever and you're or a lot in school those those summers of uh copious amounts of caffeine and staying up as long as physically (laughs) possible and a little recruitment challenge or grinding for a team (laughs) yeah Oh you know, my God, the phase RCs, bro, were the most <laughs> tired time in my high school life, bro, because uh, I had to do, like me being, uh, my parents are immigrants, they immigrated to the US when I was a little kid, um, and they never went to college, so their only thing for me was like, you gotta go to college, so I had to keep my grades at a certain point to even be able to play video games, to have uh-huh. that freedom, so like I had to, you know, I had to sacrifice so much sleep during that time, bro, I was, yeah. like, you know, I was, I was, yeah, but anyway continue sorry i didn't mean to cut you off no i but it's it's just that's what it's it's more and more you see pretty much every big streamer especially the like the people just they're going to the gym they're taking their health more seriously and i think that people being more transparent with the mental health aspect of creating and um you know sometimes we put a little too much too much weight on on those numbers or whatever the case may be and i i think that people should know what they're getting into when they want to do this because it's not all just about money and and fame like there's a there's a toll it can take on on other aspects of your life Well, um, yo, bro, do you have any other questions for me? Um, I do have a final question that I've been okay, cool. saving. I want to know where, you're, where your head's at when it comes to what you're thinking about for the future, whether that's a year from now, five years from now. What's, what's something you want to put out there into the world that, that you want to accomplish, where you want to be, something that you want to do or uh, have thoughts about? Um, I think there's a lot of things that I really want to do, but I only have time to do a couple of them. So, Uh I mean, really, I would say my main goals, the things that would make me the happiest, um, obviously, like really, I get my happiness out of my relationships. Like, you know, I have an amazing relationship with my girlfriend, Mm -hmm. um, that I value so much. She's my best friend. Like we literally like are together all day. Like we make each other laugh. Like it's 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 a relationship that i value so much and then you know my my dad my mom my sister uh my best friends my roommates you know th- these are the people that i you know talk with every day who help me through things so you know that's something i really value uh, you know a lot and gives me a lot of happiness um but i think you know as far as like projects things that i want to do you know the two things that i really you know want to do the most is i want to make charge success and uh-huh. to give you a specific goal is i want charge to be in all if not most of like the major grocery store slash convenience store slash gas station chains uh you know i want to see charred chocolate in 7-eleven i want to see charred chocolate in walmart i want to see just charred chocolate in Do- dollar general we're actually flying out to pitch uh to dollar general in a couple of weeks um which is pretty cool we had like some calls with them and showed them the product and they were interested so they asked us to come in and see them in person so I mean that would that would be really cool. Um, I really believe in the product. I think the barrier to entry is a little bit high right now. Like the the cheapest because uh, we can only we can only sell in bulk right now because uh, when you ship the product, it needs to be refrigerated, which adds uh, cost to the shipping. Mm-hmm. And we don't want to charge people for shipping. We wanna we want to keep it. You know, in a world where every shipping is free, you know, we don't want to be charging people for shipping too. Yeah. So right now we can only fulfill online orders in bulk and the smallest order is a 36 pack so you get 36 chocolate balls for 36 dollars um at one dollar a chocolate and i really want to get the chocolate into stores because then it makes it a lot easier and the buried entry a lot lower for people because then if they want to try it all they need to do is spend one dollar to try they just walk into their local 7-eleven or you know so i think that 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 would be the coolest thing like i would probably actually there's not a lot of things that would really make me like smile from fucking cheek to cheek, like 
outside of, you know, like family relationships, all that stuff. But like, if I, if Charge was in all these different stores, like I would, like, I would be so fucking happy. Like, <laughs> it would be so cool. And, and I, like, again, I, I want you and whoever ends up watching this to understand that this is not something that I'm doing to just make a lot of money and, mm -hmm. and get rid of, you know, this is something that I'm genuinely passionate about. And like, something that I believe in my head could live longer than, you know, my career, you know? So I think, um, I, 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 that would be the coolest thing ever. So I think that's like one big goal. And the other goal is just, you know, continue scaling my marketing company. It's a uh, website is gameovertalent.com. And, you know, uh, we, um, we did a little bit of talent management for a little while, but realized it wasn't really our forte. We just, uh, you know, bring deals to different gamers and stuff. And I've been doing that for a lot of years. And we have a great relationship with the music industry. Um, we work with a ton of the biggest record labels. And um, yeah, so that's just kind of been like, you know, a, a really good business. We started it like five years ago. And, and you know, there's still a lot of work to go to bring it to a, a, a really good place. You know, I would love to have like an office for that business too, where like all the employees are coming in, you know. We have like eight employees right now in total. So it's still like a very small company, but... Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That's Besides awesome. that, I don't really have any like goals. Like I, I wish there was a good game out that I could really grind. You know, I'm not the biggest Fortnite fan. I know a lot of people have been having like, uh, you know, a lot of fun playing Fortnite and I, I am going to play it, but it's not something that I like am waking up, like dying to play, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, and, and I, I definitely wish that I had that. I do have that actually. I'm really addicted to a game called Team Fight Tactics. Oh yeah, it's, I've, I've it's, seen you play that. Yeah, it's League of Legends Auto Chess, and it's it's actually a game that I literally cannot wait to play every day. Like <laughs> that's I I feel I feel that way the same way that I did about the old CODs and stuff. But the thing is, is I've built up my streaming audience for Call of Duty. You know, I have like eight hundred thousand something followers on Twitch, all off of Call of Duty and nothing else. So anytime I stream, you know, Team Fight Tactics, it's, uh, um, you know, people are more mad than excited yeah. because they just, you know, don't know what's going on. I don't blame them because, you know, it's like it's it's I I don't like watching things either that I don't, you know, uh, you know, understand. So, um, you know, maybe maybe the other thing that would make me really really happy is if I could somehow become like you know a a TFT streamer. I don't even know how I would go about that because I don't even know like what kind of content I would make outside of streaming these days. You know, when it comes to streaming, you have to make so much content outside of streaming yeah. to scale your to scale your streams. So, um, if like I, I just wish we had an, a cool war zone. You know what I'm saying? I, I genuinely believe if they never took Verdansk out, I would still be streaming much more consistently. Um, and it may sound really dumb to say, okay, why why does that have to do with Verdansk? Like why you know why couldn't you play this or you know the new war zone? And it's like I, I can't control how I feel about things, you know, I just feel yeah. the way that I do about them. And it's like, that was just it. That was fucking it. And, and you know, everything from the guns that you were able to use to the movement, to the look and feel the map, like it was, it was just, you know, and there's still so much content that could have been made with that map, but you know, they took it out and, and I just didn't vibe with any of the things that came afterwards. So, you know, I think uh, if, if, if the new Warzone map is great, then, you know, I, I would love to come back and just do streams every day again, you know? and obviously like i really wish the zombies was good you know i i personally don't like vibe with the zombies at all in this call of duty i think it's cool and i think if you're really into grinding camos it can be really fun but i don't give a shit about any of the camos <laughs> um and it every time i play the zombies i just like am kind of sad that there it's it's not like you know a, a traditional round based or at least an offshoot of it you know because it's like i don't know i'm not the biggest fan of like extraction games i feel like they're very easy and I feel like sometimes, you know, even, even though zombie round based zombies also not very hard, like, I don't know, just like the, I don't know. I just, something I enjoy more. So that's, I guess that's it. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, but I also appreciate you taking the time to do this and um, always so proud of you and everything that you continue to do. And, um, I, I feel very lucky to, to be able to call you a friend and I, I appreciate you very much. So thank you. Hey, no problem, man. Um, thank you for always being a real one. And um, thank you for allowing me to uh, you know, speak and, and you know, opening up your platform to me. Um, 
I appreciate having having good conversations like this and you know I'm sure we'll do a, a follow-up podcast in the future at some point too so absolutely always an open invitation you have yourself a great stream um, all the love in the world and uh, I hope everything as well thank you man I appreciate it you got any plans for the rest of the day well I kind of have only slept a couple of hours so I'm gonna take a nap and okay, then cool. um, I get to work on on getting this podcast ready yeah, dude. So like I said, I'll publish the VOD after the stream and you can just download it for yourself and, and do as you please with it. I appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Yeah, no problem. No problem, man.